Hello and welcome to today's episode, which is all about taking a block of tofu and making something delicious. When I was doing the complete protein trio video a few weeks ago, where we did meatballs, burgers and koftas, the glaze that I put on the outside of tamarind and soy, I thought that would work really well just on a block of tofu. So that's what we're going to do today. I then remembered the crispy tofu video that I did where I tried to inject like a herb paste inside some tofu and it didn't work. So I'm going to try and do it this time if I can get the syringe working properly. <laughs> I've been pressing the tofu already. It's dead easy. Just slice it up, put it in between absorbent things and then put weight on top. So the tofu is under that board and then it's got cookbooks and the pestle and mortar on top. The wand on my stick blender packed in a couple of weeks ago so I've had to buy a new one um, so I thought I might as well get one that's got like a bowl attachment on it so this will be the first time using it. This is going to be pretty similar to the zahug that I made for that crispy tofu video. I'm going to make it directly into the bowl. Might have to do this in two batches because it's a small bowl but we'll see. I'll do maybe two thirds of the bag of coriander, fresh coriander. But you can use any fresh herbs that you want in this. Cilantro if you're in the States. I'm going to kind of tear it a little bit into the bowl it doesn't really matter in terms of quantity, you just scale it, you know, up and down and add things until it tastes good. I'm going to do two spring onions. I think I might just chuck the whole thing in, apart from the, those very end bits. But I will kind of break them down into pieces, kind of inch pieces thereabouts. The only reason I'm breaking it down is just to make it a little bit easier on the blender and obviously to get it in there as well. I'm going to do a green jalapeno, just top, chop the end off, the kind of stalk end, take that off and then into chunks. I've done pieces about that kind of size. Peel two cloves of garlic, I might split those into two or three pieces. So I've got the garlic and bits in there. And I'll do a little bit of salt, black pepper, and then good drizzle of olive oil. It's probably half a tablespoon, something like that. Moment of truth. So I'll put the lid on, press the button, see what happens. Yeah, I had a feeling this was gonna happen, but I thought it was worth a try. It's not getting it very fine. It's more of a very fine dice, which is not what I want. What I'm gonna do is do the other half of the batch in a bowl, and then I'll just use the, the kind of blending wand rather than the chopper. I've done the same quantity again in the bowl. I'll blitz that down and then I'll combine both and make it down to a paste. I'm also gonna add in some fresh lime juice. To get maximum juice out of the lime or any citrus fruit, just give it a good rub on the counter and it breaks the cells down a bit. Just don't be too heavy handed because otherwise you'll splat it <laughs> and then get it everywhere. I'll do half the lime to start with. Stick the wand in and blitz. I'm gonna add the mixture from the chocolate bowl. It might eventually become a paste, but I don't really have time to mess around with it today wand back in. Check the flavour and I can start adjusting the seasonings. Very zingy and bright, which is going to be amazing with the tofu. Mm. I'm going to do the rest of the lime, another tablespoon of olive oil, a bit more salt and pepper and I think we're good to go. I'm going to add in some sesame seeds, just white sesame. I didn't put them in while I was blending because they would have just got blended, funnily enough. <laughs> so now it's done. I'm just going to fold those in. So I'll do like a tablespoon, see what that's like. These are totally optional, you don't have to put them in. I just really like the flavour. I'm going to do another half tablespoon. If you want as well, if you want to boost up that flavour, you can toast the sesame seeds first. The remainder of the paste, once I've done the dish, I'm going to put it into a sterilised jar and try and get the top of it flat and then pour over a layer of olive oil. You want like a good couple centimetres and it creates um, an anaerobic environment, just so that bad bacteria doesn't thrive in there. I'm going to make up the kind of glaze marinade now and then I can just be chilling out ready for when I need it. The main ingredients are ketchup manis and then tamarind paste. So this is like a soy sauce based kind of thick sticky condiment and this is a concentrate made from the tamarind fruit. This is really tangy, vaguely iron kind of flavour. Lots of lovely sourness and um, so it's great in all kinds of different dishes. So yeah, just mix up some of these and a drop of soy sauce just to deepen the flavour because this hasn't got such a deep soy flavour as I'd like. You can pick this up in Chinese supermarkets. I think the first time I bought it was from a Sainsbury's, so if you're in the UK. So just look in supermarkets, you know, you're starting to see more things like this. So I'm going to do about a couple of tablespoons maybe of the ketchup and you can see it's a very gloopy, sticky kind of sauce. This is the tamarind paste, so you can see it's kind of it's a bit like molasses, very dark brown, very rich in colour. 
So we'll do maybe a teaspoon and a half, and a little drop of soy, quarter teaspoon, but it's gonna depend on your ketchup. If that's got a very deep flavor, then you don't need to add any soy sauce. Give that a stir and then see what the flavor's like. I'm gonna do a little bit more tamarind, but you know, just keep adding until it tastes how you want it. I'm gonna make up a little crunchy salad to go on the side. So I'm gonna use two big fat carrots and a cucumber. Pulled my spiralizer out of the cupboard. It usually gets used about once a year. It was on sale and it was an impulse purchase, but I do love it. It's just a pain in the backside to clean, uh, which is why I don't use it as much as I do. But since then, I've seen kind of handheld ones that if I'd have seen that first, I would have bought one of those because they look much more practical um, in terms of storage. <laughs> this one comes with three different blades. It's got like a small spiral, a larger, and then kind of a ribbon cutter. So what you do is mount the veg. You want to line it up with that. And then on the other side, that kind of forces it in. And just kind of center it push it forward and then just turn the crank and it leaves you with the middle of the vegetable which then goes in my mouth. I'll pull that out and do the same with a carrot. Carrots can be a little bit harder because they're a bit wonkier. You might need to just reposition it a couple of times. That was one carrot so I'm just going to see what the ratio is of uh, cucumber to carrot. You can do this with a courgette, zucchini, if you're in the States. It makes a really nice kind of noodle, so if you want something a bit lighter. So I'm just going to separate these a tiny bit. I think that'll be okay. Yeah, I'm going to make a kind of dressing, seasoning type of thing for the salad. So I'm going to lean into the Asian flavours of the tamarind and soy. I'll do a drop of soy sauce, just for saltiness. A little bit of toasted sesame oil. This has got a really powerful flavour, so you don't need much, but it gives it that nice kind of lubrication. Some white rice vinegar. This is to give it some sharpness. It cuts through the oil. And then a little bit of sweetness from some mirin. Feel free to use whatever kind of salad dressing you want in here. <sighs> Sun's shining right off my neighbour's window, right into my eyes. <laughs> so if I'm looking a bit cross-eyed at you, that's why. This is a very dark soy sauce, so I'm going in very lightly. So it'll be maybe a quarter teaspoon, and then I can adjust the flavour if I need to. Well, maybe half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of mirin. This is like a fermented rice extract, so it tastes a little bit whiny. You could perhaps use a sweet sherry, that kind of thing. Half a teaspoon of the rice vinegar. You could use any kind of vinegar, but just bear in mind, things like balsamic are gonna have a very bold flavor, but you could use just white vinegar or apple cider vinegar, that kind of thing. We'll start with half a teaspoon of the sesame oil, toasted sesame. Picking everything up, moving it around, just to get everything all mixed together nicely. Check the flavor and adjust as necessary. Touch more soy. And then we're there. If you don't have the spiralizer, you can easily use a speed peeler and just do long ribbons, that kind of thing. Or if you've got a mandolin, do a, set it so it's quite fine and do whole rounds of the carrots. For the cucumber, I'd split it in half and scrape the seeds out and then slice it because the seeds are just very wet or you can really finely slice it with a knife if you've got enough and you have that much patience, <laughs> which I don't. Put this aside ready for when I need it. Moment of truth to see if I can stuff that tofu. <laughs> so yeah, to press it, I just put it on a baking tray and then I've got like sandwiched it in between some bamboo kitchen towel, but just use a tea towel, that kind of thing. So there are my slices. So I've made them kind of thick and chunky, just so then there's a nice amount of, you know, texture there. This is a block of tofu that was frozen. So just take the whole packet and put it in the freezer um, and then defrost it. Freezing it forces the liquid out of it. So it gives it a denser texture and it kind of puts some little holes in there. It's not a crucial stage, but it's one I'd recommend. It just gives a nicer bite between your back teeth. I'm just gonna spoon it into the syringe. So let's have a look. Okay, so I think I'm gonna probably do it in three places. Put the needle in. So I'm about there with the end of the needle. Maybe I'll go a bit further. Press the plunger. Uh, <laughs> pull it out a bit. Oh no, okay. <laughs> Because freezing it does make it a bit more brittle, but principles work and seem to not put so much in. I'm just sort of puncturing it a few times. For this last one, I'll cut into it so that you can see how to do it. So I'm going to come in about there, slide the knife in. I'm trying not to go all the way through. And then should. There's a bit of a pocket. So I'm going to try and stuff that without completely disintegrating the tofu. Smearing it on the hole and then uh, 
packing it in. <laughs> I'm going to do these in the air fryer to fry them. I don't know if this is going to ooze out. This recipe has been on my mind for a couple of months and it's been keeping me awake. <laughs> like, what can I do with it? Oh, and then I'll do that. And then, oh, oh, I'm just getting very excited about it. So I'm glad I'm getting it out of my head today. Um, but I was thinking I'd like a carbohydrate on the side of it. Initially, I thought I'd make some chickpea tofu, but then I was watching MasterChef The Professionals two nights ago and there's an Indian chef on there. He did like some savory tapioca pearls. I thought that might be really interesting to try. When I was watching the program, I Googled savory tapioca recipes and this dish kept coming up in the results. And then I thought, oh, I've got tapioca pearls in the cupboard. Now this morning when I came down to soak them, I realized it was sago pearls, S-A-G-O rather than tapioca, but it's, I think it's worked okay. <laughs> so apparently sago is made from kind of tropical starches, whereas tapioca is specifically from cassava. I think in the States and other places in the world, it's called yucca. I think it's the same thing. All I did for this was gave them a really good rinse four times under cold water. Just put the pearls in the bottom, put water over the top and mix it around, sieved it. Once I'd rinsed them, I put them in the bowl and then kind of patted the top of it down so the pearls were flat and then added enough water just to submerge the very top of them. And then I've left that since 10 o'clock this morning, something like that. And they've grown considerably in size and they're very kind of bouncy. I found the recipe that I'm kind of basing it on, on holycowvegan.net. I will stick the link in the description for you. And apparently the name is, wait for it, uh, Subadana Kidji. So basically we're gonna fry off some spices and then add this on and fry them for a, a few minutes and they'll go nice and hopefully a bit crispy on the outside, but it's a little bit tender. Yeah, it should be just a nice little side dish. Mm. Got about a tablespoon of sunflower oil, which I'm gonna heat up in my wok. So I'll do that over medium heat. Mine goes up to nine, I'll do it on six. I'm gonna add lots of whole spices into mine, um, but you can do none of them, all of them, some of them, mix and match, do whatever flavors you want. I just grabbed a load of stuff out. I'll show you my herb drawer in case you wanna see it. This is my drawer of spices. So yeah, I just, cut some partitions out of a cardboard box and, and then I've got them alphabetically <laughs> because that pleases me. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of them, but I've got pink peppercorns, cardamom pods, caraway, some grains of paradise. This is, it tastes a little bit peppery. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I just bought it on a whim. <laughs> then some fenugreek, cumin and kaffir lime leaves. I'll do the spices now because I need to crush some of them. I'm gonna do the grains of paradise first and these are quite hard. So I think I'm gonna to have to pummel them a little bit more than the other bits. So I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon-ish, half a teaspoon-ish. Crush them down a bit. These has got like a nice peppery heat to them. Then I'll add in three cardamom pods and maybe half a teaspoon of pink peppercorns. And I'll just pound those down a little bit. And this is just to release the flavor a little bit. And then I'm gonna build the spice mix in a bowl. And I'll do half a teaspoon or so of cumin seeds. So these are lovely little fragrant seeds. Very nice taste. About the same of caraway. They use this in rye bread, a couple of the lime leaves. I'll get the tofu on and then I'll start frying the spices, I think. Just giving the marinade glaze kind of thing a bit of a stir, just to make sure everything's still evenly distributed. I'm gonna brush this on. What I'm thinking, I'll coat everything and then I'll do them for like five to 10 minutes-ish and then I'll flip them over and put it on again. Just make sure the whole thing's covered. So they're all covered in the glaze. Not really sure what to call it because I haven't marinated it. <laughs> so I don't know if I can call it a marinade. So they're in the basket. I think I'll do them at 160 for the first five minutes and then I can always crank the heat up once I've flipped them over. So I'm gonna fry off the spices. The reason for frying spices is it boosts the flavor, it kind of intensifies it. Feel free to use powders as well if you want, that's absolutely fine, like ground spices. Pull the spices in, let that sizzle away for a couple of minutes. Put the air fryer on for another five minutes at 160. Once things are fried off and you can smell it quite potently, I'm now gonna add in some chopped spring onion and green jalapeno. So it's two spring onions and one jalapeno. Put those in. Let that fry just for a minute or so, probably not even that. And then I'm gonna add in the sago seeds. So they've kind of, yeah, maybe double trebled inside, something like that. Toss those in. Give everything a good stir to get coated in the spicy oil. And then they're gonna cook maybe, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, something like that. We want them to be a little bit crispy in places. Gonna add in a grind of salt. 
as it's frying, it's starting to clump up a little bit. So I'm just trying to break that down a touch. And like, I've got no idea <laughs> what this is supposed to be like. As I say, it's just riffing off what I'd seen on, on TV. Just gonna pull out the tofu, have a look. Okay, so I think, yeah, I'm gonna turn it up to 180, give it another five minutes, and then we'll see what it's looking like, because it's still very soft. I want a little bit of crust on that. So the sago does burn quite easily, literally in under a minute. I got some blackened bits on there. So just try not to turn your back on it, pull it off the stove if you need to leave it. That's getting a nice bit of color on it. I'm gonna change the silicone just because of all of that burnt marinade. I don't want that to affect the flavor. Um, let this be a lesson, not to preheat your air fryer while you've got that in on its own, because it'll just fly straight up into the element. I'll just paint them with a little bit more of the marinade. And that'll go back in for about five, 10 minutes again, at 180, I think. If you haven't got an air fryer, you can do it either in a pan, just to make sure it's not sticking or anything, or in the oven, that's fine as well. We could do it on the barbecue, that kind of thing. And there's the sago. So you see it kind of clumps together. They're like frog spawn. <laughs> I think that's gonna be delicious. Turned the stove off, but I'm gonna keep it on the hot burner. And then I'll just keep, you know, moving it just to make sure nothing's sticking. And that'll just keep it warming through. So I've got a little slice of the tofu there. This is the one where I cut it open to stuff it. So it's got a really nice kind of defined stuffing. Let's have a go on that. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. Those two flavors together work perfectly. Mm. The herb paste is very vibrant, bright and fresh. And when the glaze on the outside is kind of umami, tangy, quite deep, dark flavors. As I press on the tofu, it's got a very bouncy, tight kind of texture to it. Reminds me a little bit of a duck breast, that kind of texture. Yeah, so I think air frying it like that really toughens the texture up to, not unpleasantly, very pleasantly. Yeah, it gives you a really nice sort of chew in your back teeth. And then the glaze on the outside, it's kind of almost like a skin, so it's got that as you bite into it, there's a bit of resistance. Mm, that's really good. There's the sago. So it's kind of bouncy again, that kind of texture. Let's have a go. Mm, it's a little bit like a Haribo. That kind of chewiness. Mm, the way I'm describing it probably doesn't make it sound so appetizing, but honestly, that's delicious. Mm, yeah, it needs a spicing there because otherwise it's just a very boring, bland, taste but yeah that's definitely getting made again <laughs> as i look at it i think this would work really well in like a seitan salami you could use that for the fat i've seen people using giant couscous like the israeli couscous but because that's made out of wheat i think this is going to be better because it's got more of a fatty sort of texture to it more of a yeah the same bite that fat does like you know, you get on the outside of a steak. The texture of it's chewy, but then in places where it's toasted, it's got kind of a nice little bit of crust on it, which is just really, mm, really good. I think the dish is traditionally made with cubes of fried potato as well. I think the two textures there working together would be really, really good. I see why they eat it as a, a sort of favorite snack. Mm -hmm. Onto the little cucumber and carrot salad. Mm, okay. Mm. <laughs> got a really delicious crunch to it. And then because I've kept the flavors kind of minimal in the dressing, it provides a nice bit of change from the sago and then the tofu as well, because they're both quite bold flavors, whereas this is it's fairly mild. Like you can still taste it's a cucumber and a carrot, along with some kind of background flavors from the soy and sesame oil, three of them working together. It's perfect. <laughs> Grabbed one of the ones I injected. Let's cut it open, see how well that worked. Yeah, so it's worked, it has worked a little bit, but I think cutting it that way, I think that's gonna give you much more of the paste inside. Yeah, so I'd do the pocket that way, but it was worth trying it with the syringe. You know, it's good to know these things for future use. If you don't want the hassle of stuffing it, feel free to cut those slices thinner 
because then you get more slices, which means more marinade on the outside, which means more flavor. And then just have like a spoonful of the paste and just take up a little bit at a time. In my head, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be a really tasty dish, but <laughs> it's uh, surpassed my expectations. <laughs> yeah, that's divine. <laughs> If you wanted some extra sauce to serve it with, you could add more liquids into your remaining marinade and then thicken it up with some cornstarch slurry and heat it. And then you get more bang for your buck kind of thing. Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon if you want more tasty takes on tofu landing in your inbox every week. And then head over to this one.